<laughs> good afternoon, good evening, and good day wherever you are. And I'm with the wonderful Sally Eslin once again. How are you, Sally? Hi, Harry. How are you? Hope you're having a wonderful week kicking goals, as always. Looking so excited. Uh, looking excited. Yes, well, we've got a bow tie on today because it's cool all weather. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wear a bow tie with a t shirt and shorts. It just doesn't work. <laughs> you could, but it has to be a Saturday night and in a different arena. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, uh, are you feeling anxious today? You're not looking at all anxious. No, <laughs> I've let it go. That's why. But yeah. Worry will Let be nowhere. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about anxiety. It's a follow-on from the last topic we did on stress. Yeah. And anxiety is a killer. It yeah. really is. Total yeah. killer. It's another paralyzer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. So, um, you know, we'd like to get you out of this trap, out of this rut of being anxious because there are many ways you can slip into it. Mm -hmm. without knowing without any fault of your own and there are many ways of getting out and yeah. you know if i just just amazing you know if i look up my bible 20 pages on anxiety yep. if yep. i look up disconnected kids it's got a section on anxiety if i look up nutrition for the brain it's got a section on anxiety if i look up sensory processing disorder it's got a section on anxiety if i look at norman Doidge's book it's got a section on anxiety and if I look at another book here, these are just some of the books I got off my book list. They all have a section on anxiety. And why is it? Because it's so common. So it is the most common illness in the US, so I assume here as well. And it affects 18% of the population every year, which I'm sure it's even higher. Um, it is. I, I wouldn't assume. Sorry. I hope we don't assume that just because... Trump is in power in the US. We're going to get some care. You know, please help, help, help. <laughs> well, it, it's, I'd have to say it would be in the top two here, you know, as yeah. one of the. It, I mean, it links in with depression as well. Often when you're anxious, it's a, the research is showing that, you know, it's often linked in with uh, depression as well. But um, nearly half diagnosed with depression are also diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. So, you know, anxiety, it, and it exists from such a young age. It's not just something that we grow into or, or, or sort of socialise into. Look at kids, and you work with them all the time. And so there are very good reasons for this. When I look at some of the risk factors for anxiety, yep. female gender, yep. number one. Absolutely. It comes up in the research all the time. Low socioeconomic status. Yep. Anxiety in childhood. Yep. Anxious personality. Yes. Now, there are some more. Um, but, but these are causes, not risk factors. Maternal anxiety or postnatal depression. Oh, yes. Cause. Yep, yep. Significant childhood illness. Yes. So that, that can cause dislocation, separation. Any adverse childhood experience. This is what I call childhood trauma. But So it's abuse, witnessing a traumatic event, Parental conflict, early separation from mum. Yep. Love anything it. like that. Substance abuse. Yes. In the family or yes. yourself. A learning difficulty. That's that's one a big trigger. I see. Huge. You would see that all the time. All Where you're falling behind your peers and yep. you can't keep. So there are lots of reasons why children have anxiety, and most of them are out of their control. Yep. Yep. I mean, I, I was looking at some different types of anxiety too. There's the generalised anxiety disorder known as GAD, which once again, you were talking about women. Women are twice as likely to be affected as men and yeah. often is linked in with, you know, major depression. There's the panic disorder. Once again, women are twice as likely to be affected as men. There's the social anxiety disorder, equally common, which is equally amongst men and women. And... Um, and that actually starts at around the age of about 13, research has thrown that social anxiety of, I suppose, fitting in the peer group pressure, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm not good enough or whatever it is. And then, of course, there's the anxiety linked in with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, yeah. and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Yes. It's often linked to that abuse as well. Um, but, you know, OCD is, the onset is common around 19, which I, I was That's, surprised at, yeah. I had a, 
I had a client two days ago, he adult, yeah, therapist, and he talks about PTSD when I see him, and he's pretty chill. So I, I drilled down a bit the other day, yeah, and you know he talked about some of the traumatic experience, some some of the stressful life situations he's been in, um, but I think what where the PTSD was that when he talked about those events with his family, yep. they, they didn't acknowledge it. Right. They didn't okay. want to hear yep. they, they, they couldn't cope with it. So it's every time he says, yeah. no, mm. well, no one's interested. So they just talk over him. Mm. And that causes him enormous. That causes him, you know, to shut down for a day or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it doesn't have to be, you know, being in battle. Yes. Or being in a car accident it can be the reaction from the safe space. Yeah, yeah. And, um, de stress. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I was looking at the ways of dealing with anxiety. That was sort of my approach about it today. Can, can, can I just segue in a bit before that? So, yeah. so there are some risks associated with anxiety. If you have anxiety, it raised, significantly raises your risk of suicide, yep. of premature mortality and cardiovascular disease. So yep. there's some really good motivations there to head it off if you have it. Well, it affects your blood pressure. You see it. I see it in my mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah. So what are the symptoms that you feel when you're anxious? Oh, I just so. get it within yourself. Like, you know, that... that, that, that rising up within you do you get, ever get that where it's just the shakes what's rising up what's rising up well it's like fear i don't know fear it's, right yeah yeah you're raising up and yeah oh, getting ground and, and losing that control like that yeah. losing um to be able to manage it's just like it, yeah. it starts overtaking you swallowing you in i don't know anxious you know i, I don't know going back to when you did exams i'd get you know that stomach gurgling, the tightness, whatever, you know, it would affect my digestion a lot. Definitely. Big time. Yeah. yeah. And itchiness, you know, like the OCD or, you know, whatever. Um, Tight muscles too. That's another really common symptom. Mm, mm. If you feel some, I mean, you're a phys you're an ex-physical therapist, but <laughs> <laughs> I still am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you feel, if, you feel, if you feel, if you feel your clients, if you put your clients on the floor and rock them, yeah. you will feel if they've got tense core. I love how them. you taught me that one a few years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a really so cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I think of a few, go on. I could think of a few people who would be like a rock. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like rock it out of them. <laughs> but even, you know, putting your hands on the sh shoulders, you can feel the anxiety, the stress, and it literally is the physical shoulders up here. Like, yeah. relax, Max, you know, you're stressed and anxious. It's just, and the posture, always bent over, shoulders in and up, you know. So you get this lock up between the shoulders and the hips. Yeah. Commonly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Partic absolutely. Particularly computer workers. Yeah. Public servants. Yeah. That sort of thing. Military people. Mm -hmm. And anxiety, of course, is linking into those unhealthy habits. You know, go grab a fag or, you know, just, I don't know, you might even just be keep having coffees, you know, just like keep you stimulated or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, get a code. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. It's not healthy yeah. for your mental state and it's not healthy, as we said, for your blood pressure. And as you said, yeah, it, that's right. and particularly when it, it becomes a habit, when that's just the state that you're living in, in an anxious state and over time, that chronic anxiety will mm. absolutely uh, have a lot of health ramifications. Absolutely. Well, you generate the stress hormones long term, and that'll absolutely. eat away at your body. Yeah. The cortisol, the adrenaline—it's just like overrunning mm. and overrunning and overrunning, and it's yeah. you know, and anxiety often, well, most of the time, it's anxiety about things in the future. It's not about the now. So that was leading into how to deal with anxiety is to stay present, to to uh, learn to stop. Uh, thinking about what's happened in the past and start focusing on just being now. There's nothing you control in the future and it's an anxiety of it all. And, you know, anxiety around finances, about relationships, it's the same old things. It's always finances, relationships. Um, what else? Sexual performance. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I go to the off and I, I could only imagine for men how, anyway, for all for anybody really, but yeah, it's <laughs> the anxiety of... Well, you know, we all get the ads in our inboxes. There must be some demand. <laughs> absolutely. By a grass. Excuse me. <laughs> and that's too funny. So, so, so one of the liberating phrases that I learned in my 20s to get yep. rid of anxiety yep. was think and act at the same time. So if Harry cannot think and act at the same time, if I can't do what I'm thinking about, then I can put off the thought. Yep. No need to no need to engage in it. And for me, if I'm if I'm at the doorway of a thought that might be anxious, I have a choice at the doorway. Yeah. But once yep. I go through the doorway, I've no longer got the choice. Yeah. You made the action. I'm all yes. about choices. We we I just did a post yesterday just about choice. There's nothing yeah. more certain than life is about choice. And everything we do, the think, feel, whatever, is a choice. And like own that choice. But you know, also stop and think, what are the choices I'm making? Are they are they gonna help me or not? So in my model I've got you know, the things, three things is focus on the now, stop worrying about the what ifs of tomorrow because they're out of your control. Feel freer, you know, let things go, just stay present. Forget about past experiences. You know, that's that was then. It doesn't mean that it has to be negative in the future, which often links in with that anxiety of, oh, well, this is what it's been like in the past. It's been a struggle. So forget, focus and free makes you happier, healthier and more harmonious with your day-to-day -day life. Um, you're less depressed, you're in a better mental state you're, and happier. You're just more present. Um, and then overall, you just get calmness, just that calmness in your life because you're living in the now and not worrying so much about the future because the only thing is now. And when you really feel and believe that, the only thing we can control is our choices now. And they will impact us tomorrow and down the track, but it's about the now. So... You know, that's my model in a nutshell, cut down to focus, be free, forget, so you can get healthier, harmonious and happier and overall be more calm. Do you like that one? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. And I just had a thought. You've got an iPad, haven't you? Yes, yes. And you've got paper. So, yeah, why don't I use that as my homework for the week to hook up paper 54 or whatever it is with... And, yeah, and you could then email me the image, yeah, of perfect. your model. That'd be perfect. Yeah. So my model was a little, you know, it's about more splitting up that micro moment where we're in the present. Yep. First thing for me is to activate the awareness that you are anxious. <laughs> yes. Okay. To notice those physical symptoms. Yeah. 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 Get somebody else to help you about what they are. And then when you got that knowledge, then pay attention and then approve the reason. In other words, love it. Yes, I'm anxious because I haven't got time to go shopping or because, you know, I'm not going to look good enough or because yeah. whatever it is. Okay. And then then once you know the reason, you can address the cause. And what that does is it, uh, by activating the awareness, it allows you to access your insight. Then if we, if we know the reason and we address the cause, we can go into action and then that, is, that allows us to absorb the worry. It just disappears. Ooh, I love that. Of having paper. And this will allow us to advance. Gee, you're on fire today. <laughs> so my, my title was Ax the Anxiety, Stop the Rot Before It Sets In. Oh, I love that. That sounds like a really good book. <laughs> it's a bit like dry rot, you know. Once it's in there and it's rotted oh. away the timber, it's hard to get back like out. Like staff in the walls of a hospital, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard, that's hard right. to eradicate because it just, you know, getting there, rising damp. Yeah, um, I had something very similar. I had assess what's worrying you, accept what's going on, having awareness of the what's happened in the past and that aware that it, you only have the now and the choices are made in the now. And agree to let go, agree to stay in the moment, and agree to action things to decrease your worry and anxiety. Yeah. So you talked a bit about STATCH. The, w, the World Health Organization identifies this as the most common mental disorder. Well, yep. I guess that's pretty obvious. 
affects seven percent of women, seven percent of men, and twelve percent of women globally. Yep. But another study suggested this was um, a review of epidemiology of anxiety disorders in the twenty first century. That suggests that it affects one in three in the population. Yep. Not surprised. Not surprised. Um, you've covered the disorders um, well. The sort of solutions that I can find in this Bible, which you know, I'd recommend to any any therapist. I would recommend this to any therapist. Yep. It's an awesome book. It's it it surfaces all the evidence base for for integrative and complementary medicine, which is what excites me. Beautiful book. Um, they list uh, these evidence-based solutions. Neurofeedback has got a lot of evidence-based. Yep. Listening and music therapy. Listening therapy is what I do. Oh, I love it. Yep. Cognitive behavioral therapy is for some. Hypnotherapy, meditation. Meditation, huge. I think meditation is awesome. Exercise, dance, and yoga also has some evidence. Right up my alley. You know. <laughs> Singing is another one. You can sing away the blues. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you, if, well, the only proviso there, Sal, is if you can sing. <laughs> I, was going, I was just about to say, as long as no one else can hear it. <laughs> In the shower, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you're walking, Humming. as you're exercising, with your headphones on, loving yourself sick, just letting it out. <laughs> and one of the tools I use is humming. I use it clinically because if you hum, you generate a vibration which gets into your vestibular and limbic system. And starts disentangling some of that. We did that a lot in yoga. Yeah. yeah. Slow breathing is another one. There are techniques for slow breathing, which gets you out of fight and flight. Yeah. But you've got to be aware. If you're not aware, you're not going to. Every, everything we talk about requires awareness because otherwise, it's you're not you're not understanding yourself. Do you remember the old days? They used to have the paper bag, you know, blowing in yeah. bags. Yeah. The taco. They still do. Still works. What's it called? Buteco, it's a, it's a Russian technique for asthma. That's where it comes from. Yep. Raises the CO2. Yep. And sunlight is another one. Get out in the sun. Oh. It boosts your immune system and your mood. It's really simple. And don't put the sunscreen on. Get it on your skin. Yeah, absolutely. S-K-I-N. Not on the cosmetics, not on the sunscreen, on the skin. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Like yeah. on the skin. And um, acupuncture. Oh, yeah, good one. Massage. Supplement, supplementation with fish oil, magnesium, and multivitamin. Yeah. All of those have evidence based. And as you've mentioned, reduce or eliminate smoking, caffeine, and excessive alcohol intake, not to mention cocaine. Oh, and any other drugs, all that stuff. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and some of those fuel it, you know, look at the anxiety <laughs> with the ice heads. It's like, oh. And. Remember to connect. Yeah. Connect with someone and talk to them. Can I just say one of the best anxiety relievers is having a good old session with Zach. I think it just, you know, turns everything off. Yeah. Let it all yes. out. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's At least you're consistent. You're consistent. So. <laughs> one of my favourite subjects. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to write a book on it one day, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, no, it would be quite funny because you'll be really technical. <laughs> it might be an interactive video. Perhaps, I don't know. <laughs> we'll co-author a book. You can yeah. Right. <laughs> I think we'll um, have to go to Hawaii and revisit that one. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in Hawaii stays in Hawaii. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, so the big ones, ju just to recap, the big ones happen in childhood. And if you have, if you're watching this and you have a have a child or intend to have a child, pay attention to the trauma that they experience or witness because these are the biggest single yeah. causes of later anxiety in adulthood. Yeah. Particularly with, you know, divorce at one in two. And I know I grew up with a lot of fighting and bickering. And, you know, you take it on board yourself. You take it personally as a kid. And mm. kids are, you know, it's 
to us it might be a little thing, but to them it's, you know, their whole world. So it, it's no wonder that it affects us down the track and have to have therapies for the rest of our life to deal with it. Absolutely. <laughs> I've got to show you something cool, Sally. I just did it. I did an Instagram post on this the other day. This is so cool. I saw that. I loved it. Yeah. This is made out of one bit of A4 paper. Whoa. Isn't that cool? So I'm getting all my plants to do it this, this month. No, and you make. had music to it, didn't you, when you posted it? it oh, yeah, I did. I just did it on my phone. Yeah, and added a bit of my own music. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun. One bit of A4 paper. Isn't that incredible? Incredible, incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well, I think we should wrap it up there. That was a really, it is a really important topic, but I think the yeah. key take out of this is start building up the awareness of yourself. Of, yes. And then what's making you anxious and then start assessing and, and actioning over around that. Because if you're not aware of it, you're just in autopilot, well, you know, nothing's going to change. And as yeah. we see, it layers up chronically, chronically, chronically to the point that it drags you down in a big way. Thump, it gets you. And look at this. I've exceeded myself today. <laughs> I've already written up the blog. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly anything I had to say wasn't important. <laughs> well, no, there's a gap at the top. Oh no, it's all there and I'm oh, waiting for your model on waiting for paper. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll um, send you my model here. I'll take it. All right, yeah. Harry, lovely to chat with you and thank you yes. for listening and okay. any feedback or any subjects, love to hear from you. Yeah, for sure. In your blog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye, bye then. <laughs>